So in this module, we will learn about how you can use Azure AI language service to create custom named entity recognition solution. So this is a feature available in Azure AI language service wherein you can do custom entity extraction. So we already read about named entity recognition. So Azure AI language service has a feature to identify and extract entities from your text, right? Some named entities, let's say uh, some location some person things or any kind of uh, named entities that you want to retrieve from your text documents now we can build a custom named entity recognition solution wherein you can process text from your sources like legal agreements or online ads or any kind of let, let's say bank documents uh, let's say you want to audit some documents so these kind of documents you can use which can be in unstructured format and you can extract certain entities from those documents and you can use these kind of solutions wherein you can categorize your text into specific types okay the elements within your text you can categorize under specific entities like people location objects events right so here it can help you to enhance the ability to process and analyze large volumes of unstructured text data and it makes it very easier to extract the meaningful information for your various apps so let us understand what exactly is the importance of this custom named entity recognition it is a azure api service that can identify and extract user defined entities from your document. so basically you can train a model wherein you you can train your model with your own entities right so you can have the entities names that range from name and the addresses on your bank statements to specific terms for knowledge mining and improving your search results so that means let's say you want to define certain entities which can search uh, uh, those kind of similar text related to that entity from your a large number of text documents so you can build a model and you can use that model in your application now let us understand the difference between custom versus built in uh, named entity so what is built in named entity so your as your ai language provides built in entity recognition wherein you can identify common entities like person names location organizations urls so these are the built in capabilities to extract these kind of entities right here you will service will be requiring very minimal configuration you need not uh, you know use large amount of data to train the model and all you can readily uh, call your service call the endpoint of your azure ai language service and you can uh, you know specify uh, your documents which you want to analyze and extract these kind of built in entities uh, so here you have your endpoint and then you specify the version api version which you want to use and this will be your response example so here your response from this kind of api when you call to analyze your text could be uh, like entities will be there so the text that it has identified and it can categorize under that specific entity like location whether it is a date time so there are very few predefined built in capabilities that you have which you can use to uh, extract these common entities okay but when it comes to custom named entity recognition so this is designed for extracting the entities that are not covered in your built in service or if you want to extract specific entity like if you want to process your legal or a bank data or if you want to enhance your catalog search okay or you want to identify specific text for your audit policies right so then you will have to uh, train a custom named entity recognition model wherein you need to use the data uh, that you want to extract so if you want to extract certain specific entities you have to train your model with that kind of data right so let us uh look at these steps so it is the similar steps that we have seen in our previous uh, module so here also uh, before you have to develop such kind of entity extraction model you need to define those entities so you need to first of all understand 
what kind of entities that you want to extract and then clearly define those entities that you want to identify. For example, let's say you want to extract the entities from a bank state. So it can be uh, the entities that belongs to specific parts like your bank name, your customer name, your account number, account name. Right, these kind of specific text that you want to extract from your bank statement and you want to tag them to certain entity. After you define your entities that you want to extract from your bank statement, then you have to use the training data for which you have to tag it first. So that means you have to label your data accurately by specifying which text in your data corresponds to which entry, right? So here you should be using diverse set of input documents so that your model can learn effectively, okay? So you need to use lot of different kind of documents which has different kind of text and then tag the text to that entities that you have defined, right? So that way your model will be able to learn from your unstructured text data that you specify to it by labeling the text with the entity name okay so then you train your model and this step will teach your model to recognize those defined entities from your different types of bank documents in this case. Now once you have trained your model, then you have to evaluate your trained model by viewing its results, right? So here you can have certain metrics like precision, recall, which will be uh, given a score between 0 and 1 and using that value of your precision and recall the score that will be assigned to your model you can evaluate whether your model is performing good or bad. So based on that score once you evaluate your model if you see that your model is not able to extract certain entities okay it's not able to identify some kind of text and not able to identify those entities that you want to identify from those documents you need to refine your model. So how you refine your model? Once first you identify the entities that are missed or that are incorrectly extracted. Then use more data around those kind of entities. Okay. And then retrain your model to improve the performance of your model. Once you are satisfied with the performance after retraining your model, after re-evaluating, you deploy the model. Right. So then once you deploy, your model becomes available to use via your REST API. And you can use this deployed model to extract the entities by submitting the extraction tasks through API. So you will be submitting a JSON request wherein you will specify that you want to do the entity extraction task. Okay. We'll see further how your request format would be when you're trying to extract the entities from your deployed uh, custom named entity recognition model that you have trained. So there are certain considerations when you select your data and when you're trying to refine your entities. So these kind of consideration when you take into account you will be able to train your model effectively. So when it comes to data selection you should make sure that you use diverse data and so that you don't lose any kind of real life distribution expected in your actual data. So that means the data samples that you are trying to use should be included from different sources and it should be of different format so that the training data that you are using should be uh, similar to the real life kind of data. And then it comes to distribution. You should ensure that appropriate distribution of document types should be used so that you can help your model to learn the correct relationship. Okay, so the data that you're using should be uh, something like it should be distributed appropriately. That means you should use wide range of data. And then accuracy. So the data that you're using should closely resemble the real world data that you are expecting to identify, right? So any fake data, if you are trying to use to start the training process, it will not yield you accurate results after uh, the model has been trained. So these three aspects should be very carefully taken when you are selecting your training data and then refining the entities. So you should make sure that the entities that you are defining in your first step should be distinct to avoid any ambiguity. For example, if you have something called contact info that you try to extract from your bank account. Now contact info can be like phone, email, social media. So instead of uh, you know specifying only a single entity like contact info which will make your model uh, to not interpret it correctly. I mean it will be an ambiguity here like whether to treat phone
फोन एज दी कॉन्टेक्ट इन्फो और ई मेल एज दी कॉन्टेक्ट इन्फो सो यू कैन स्पेसिफाई थ्री डिफरेंट एंटिटीज फॉर कॉन्टेक्ट इन्फो लाइक फोन ई मेल सोशल मीडिया सो यू कैन डिफाइन थ्री डिफरेंट एंटिटीज इंस्टेड ऑफ डिफाइनिंग अ सिंगल एंटिटी कॉल कॉन्टेक्ट कमिंग टू एम्बिग्यूस एंटिटी इफ नेसेसरी समटाइम्स देर आर सर्टेन केसेस वेर योर एंटिटीज गेट एम्बिग्यूस देन यू शुड इंक्लूड मोर एग्जाम्पल्स टू हेल्प मॉडल टू लर्न डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन सिमिलर एंटिटी राइट सो यू नीड टू इंक्लूड मोर एग्जाम्पल्स इन दैट केस सो दैट योर मॉडल शुड बी एबल टू क्लियरली डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन if the entities are kind of similar now let us see how you extract the entities so to submit an extraction tasks once you once you have deployed your model and your api is ready you need to specify a json payload okay so when you submit a json payload in your request you need to specify a task which mentions it that it is a custom entity recognition task and here you specify your documents which you want it to analyze okay and then your project name your deployment name where you have deployed your model okay now there are certain project limits that is your ai language service enforces there are certain restrictions so you can use maximum up to 100000 files for training and there is a minimum number of files that you should use that is 10 and coming to deployments you can do 10 deployment names per project basically so you can do 10 different deployments you can use 10 different deployment names per project coming to apis while authoring your api you can submit 10 post requests and 100 get request per minute so 10 deployment names that means 10 post requests you can do while authoring so that means you are authoring an endpoint here and you can do 100 get request to the api to get the status of your authoring and then when it comes to actual analysis you can do 20 get or post request that means you can submit 20 post request json request and then you can do 20 get request to retrieve the entity and coming to your projects you can have one storage account per project wherein you will be storing your data and you can have 500 project per resource so per ai language resource you can create 500 different projects and for each pro project you can have 50 trained models deployed okay so 50 different trained models you can deploy and then you can compare which model is performing well coming to entities your each entity can be up to 500 characters and you can define up to 200 different entity types now coming to labeling your data labeling or tagging your data correctly is very crucial as i told earlier for training your custom ner model so here is a step by step guide that you can uh, use to label your data and you can use is your language studio interface which is very uh, uh, you know handy when it comes to labeling your data so first of all you need to understand certain key concepts while labeling your data that is consistency so you need to ensure that you are using the same labeling approach across all documents that means you would not uh, like your labeling uh, certain entity in one document differently and another document and different if the same entity is labeled in one document uh, how it is labeled the same way you have to label in the second document also so this will make sure that your model learn without any conflicting inputs next comes the precision so you need to make sure that you label only the necessary part of your text in the document you are not going to label anything which is actually you are not trying to identify okay so this makes that your extracted entity is accurate and relevant and then comes the completeness so you need to make sure that you label all your relevant entities in your data so you should not leave any uh, data which actually you trying to extract or actually trying to tag with certain entity and you're not labeling it so you need to make sure that all the instances of your entities are recognized by your model for that in order to ensure that that your model is able to recognize all your instances of a particular entity you should label all your relevant entities in your training data so coming to how you can use language studio for labeling so in your azure portal once you have created your azure ai language resource you can navigate to language studio and then either you can create or if you have already created the project select that project and then start labeling your entities so for labeling your entities you should upload a document so go to your data tab 
and upload the document that you want to label then open the document highlight the text for the entity that you want to label then select your entity type either from your predefined categories or you can create a new category and then specify the label and confirm the label so then your labels will be automatically saved in your storage account and this data will be saved in a json file format which will be used for training further your model now that json on file that is saved once you have specified the labels for your text based on the entity type that you want to categorize under the json file format is something like this so you should clearly understand this json file format so that if you are importing labels from any other object you should make sure that this accepted custom ner data format is imported when you are trying to label your or when you are trying to train your model so in this json file structure you have a metadata section which contains your project name project description language so all that you are supposed to specify and then you have your entities so what are the different entities so you have to also have to specify the project kind and under that you need to specify the different entities that you are going to train your model for and then you have your training data where you specify your documents location of your document the path the language code the language in which your document is written and the data set okay and in that data set what are the different entities that you are labeling okay your labels so region offset is nothing but the starting uh, position of your text and the length and that text you are labeling under what entity okay so those entities you will be specifying and those are your labels similarly the next document wherein you have your text and the entity under which you are labeling it once you have labeled your data using your language studio you can train your model so you need to ensure that your data is correctly labeled in json format and uploaded to your storage account then in your language studio itself you have a training tab wherein you can select your project and start the training and you can also track the training job status and you can address if any issues arise once your model has been trained you can check the outcomes and make sure that your model has learned effectively from your data now coming to evaluating your model as i said earlier there are three metrics that you need to review precision recall and f1 and your precision is nothing but ratio of the correct entity labels to all the labels attempted that means from all the labels that it has identified which are the correct entity that it has labeled so high precision means correct labeling when an entity is recognized so whenever it is trying to recognize any entity it is labeling it correctly that is your precision coming to recall it is the ratio of correct entity labels to actual entities in the text okay so let's say your model has not identified all the entities but there are let's say 100 entities in your uh, text so out of those 100 entities how many are correctly identified correctly labeled so high recall means model identifies most entities coming to f1 score it is a combined metric of your precision and recall which indicates the overall performance it is the harmonic mean of your precision and recall. so when your model has been trained successfully and when you are trying to evaluate your model this kind of uh, uh, report will be given to you wherein you will have a f1 score precision value recall value so based on these results you can decide whether your model is performing good or not so how do you interpret these three results let's say if you have got high precision and high recall so both the values are high let's say then you can say that your model is performing well overall okay but let's say if you got low precision and low recall both are low then you uh, can say that your model is struggling with recognition and labeling so it's not even able to identify the entities and not even able to label them correct but let's say if you have high recall and low precision then that means model is able to identify the ent entities okay it's able to identify the entities in your text but it is not able to label them correctly because what is recall as we said earlier recall is nothing but ratio of the correct entity labels to the actual entities in the text so that means it is able to identify the entities but not able to label them correctly 
डायरेक्टली बट लेट से इफ यू हैव हाई प्रसिशन एंड लो रिकॉल इट मीन्स दैट मॉडल ऑलवेज लेबल करेक्टली बट इट मिस इज मेनी एंटिटीज दैट मीन्स इट्स नॉट एबल टू एक्सट्रैक्ट ऑल दी एंटिटीज बट वेन एवर इट इज एक्सट्रैक्टिंग एनी एंटिटी इट इज लेबलिंग करेक्टली सो दिस वे यू कैन इंटरप्रेट योर मेट्रिक्स फ्रॉम द रिपोर्ट दैट इज गिविंग टू अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू ऑल्सो हैव ए कंफ्यूजन मेट्रिक्स प्रेजेंट देयर which you can use to view your uh, performance of your uh, entities individually like how your entities are being classified if there is any misclassification for any particular entity and based on that you can adjust your data and then relabel them accordingly so by following these steps you can effectively train and evaluate your ner model and ensure that it performs well in recognizing the entity and also labeling them correct so we'll see all this in a lab demo how you can label and then how you can identify this uh, evaluation and performance of your model so this is how you can make use of azure ai language service to build a custom ner model thank you